I asked the pastor a while ago how much time I had. And he said, take all the time you want, but we leave about 1230. <laughs> I don't know what he meant by that. My, this, uh, I've never seen as many Baptists together in one place before. Next America will be one of them, break, they'll break out in a fight back there in the back around Richard. Richard, Richard starts something back there if you don't watch him. But I'm glad that I could be here. I'm glad that God has prospered Bible Baptist Church. And, and you look, and if you could see the picture, and there's a picture around here of that old cow pasture over there with barbed wire fence, and can compare it to what you got when you see now, that ought to, that ought to touch your heart for some reason. So do that sometimes. I don't know where to start on page one or page two. I'm worried about the time. So I'm, I'm going to get over that. You'll see in just a little while. I'll be completely rid of the dread of overstaying my welcome. Thank you for coming today. Let's read in Matthew chapter number 28, please. Matthew chapter number 28, and we'll read from verse number 16. <clears throat> then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I want to start out this morning by saying that there's a reason for everything that happens. Do you understand that? You need to grasp that, that there is a reason for everything that happens. And the reason is that God is working out His plan upon earth in your life and in my life. Sometimes the going gets rough, doesn't it? Sickness comes, death comes, uh, poverty comes. There's a whole lot of things that happen, and we may get discouraged because of it, and rightly so. After all, we are human beings, we have emotions, and we have desires. But God is still in charge regardless of what happens, what happens in the world. You know, I, I never lay awake wondering what's going to go on in the Middle East over there. I can, you can go to the Old Testament and read and you'll find out what's going to happen. It, it's, it's gone on for centuries. So I don't worry about that because God is working out His will in the world. And in your life, there's bad things that happen, isn't there? I had my wife stand a minute ago, and, and she had a bad heart attack. But you know, she's up and around, and I have to slow her down. And I said, you can't go out there and work in the garden. This, I'm not going out there, so you can't go out there. You can't mow the yard. <laughs> Because you, had a, you just had a heart attack, gal. Then you've got to take it just a little bit easy. I don't know why heart attacks happen to good people, but they do. Heart attacks kill, kill good people. Don't worry about that. Because my wife and I have settled this question a long time ago. God is in charge of my life. He takes me and uses me as he sees fit. And one day he'll come for me when he's ready. And I'm sure that... Somewhere along the way that you and I have traveled, Bible Baptist Church has been a part of our lives. Do you understand that? Can you think about uh, 10,000 years ago in God's eyes, in His mind, in His thinking, you were already here, already here. Let me ask a question, and this is the most foolish question you'll ever hear. Is there anyone here from Jonesboro, Tennessee? Nobody? What, what do you all do for t entertainment? <laughs> You're supposed to go to Jonesboro. Matter of fact, tomorrow, I believe tomorrow, it's a July the 4th, it may be a couple, a couple of days away, they have Jonesboro days. 
He needed to go across the mountain to Jonesboro. Now, why did I ask that? I asked that because I got my start in Jonesboro, Tennessee. I was born there. So I consider myself a, a scholar concerning Jonesboro, Tennessee. But I'm going to use starting in Jonesboro, Tennessee and come down to this present day and, and to show you how we got here over 53 years ago, 45-year-old church here, but I, I got a, couldn't get my figures to come out right, so I just put 53 down, and it, it works in there somehow or another if you do your math. It'll work, it'll work out. On August the 14th, 1936, Charles Wesley Arrowwood was born into the family of uh, John Wesley Arrowwood and Pearly May Cole. That was my beginning. That's, that's when God began to make me known to people. And as you and I go down the way, we can see a lot of places we could drop off if we want to, but if we'll think about them, if, I, if God had not brought me to that place, I would not be here today. Our life is going in steps. Going in steps. I'm going to show you how God brought me here, how God... Uh, Everything that's happened, let's, let's give God the glory for it. So, 78 years ago, I guess it is, I was born. Jonesboro, Tennessee. Grew up there, went to, high, went to school there. Graduated from Lamar High School in 1954. One of the benefits that I had during that time was that uh, the FBI, some of you may be familiar with them, but the FBI came to schools and they recruited uh, teenagers to go to Washington, D.C. and work. I did that. Somebody else did that about the same time. Her, her name was Betty Ross Keys. We lived in the general area, a few miles apart. But that's uh, where Betty Ross Keys comes into the situation. Betty Ross Keyes was visited by the FBI and, and interviewed for a job in Washington, D.C., and she took it, just like I did. So in 1954, that's where we went. We went to Washington, D.C. to work for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. But it doesn't stop there. Guess where I was put? Got any single boys here? They see your hand if you're single. I thought we had some. Oh, there's one. I don't know who told him wrong. No. But guess where I wound up when, when I got to Washington, D.C.? I wound up in a typing pool. Because I can really type. I got those fingers, you know. I, I don't know why I can't play the piano. Same fingers. But... Uh, in a typing pool, in a room bigger than this auditorium here, much bigger than this, all you could see for miles and miles were young girls. Here I was a young boy in the midst of all those young girls. Good, it's probably 150 young girls and they're typists. Now, if you want to be a boy in a typing pool with 150 some girls, you better be pretty strong because They'll put a knot on your head. But guess who else was in that time? Guess who else was in that typing pool? Betty Ross Keys from Chucky, Tennessee. She was in that. Was that an accident? No. It wasn't an accident because God does as he sees fit. So we were in the typing pool together. I remember she'll kill me. My wife has a very, I'll show you something way about the way she walks. And I saw that walk coming down the side of the office that we were in, and, and I said, hmm. So I found out who she was. I found out she was Betty Ross Keys, and she grew up in East Tennessee and went to Chucky High School, and only lived a few miles from me, but I never saw her there. 
because God said you'll meet in the pool in, with the FBI. So we met. We met and we got where we kind of liked one another, so we figured, you know, it just, this, this might be a good time to get married. So we got married. Both working at the FBI doing clerical work. I, was, I don't have the nerve to put that secret agent off on you. I'm, you know, you got to have a little bit of integrity when you stand up here and not lie too much anyway. Just dress it up, make it sound better maybe. But we got married, uh, been married 59 years ago. It's a long time with one woman, isn't it? You should have lived it. Oh, that's a joke. Come on, laugh. <laughs> Sourpuss. Now, we, we get happy over Jesus, and we ought to, but when a poor old boy from Jonesboro, Tennessee, is trying to teach you something, preach it a little bit, you encourage him. I throw you a bone every now and then. Give you a chance. Sound like the rest home we go to. Those people, when you get 80, 90 years old, you don't understand anything. So you have to get you another language to learn. But anyway, married for, for 59 years, just passed. Well, while we was working there at the FBI in the typist pool, they, they moved me over another department. They made me the chief honcho over the duplication unit. So I, I was in there working with Xerox equipment. You heard about Xerox a while ago, but this is primitive Xerox equipment. It wasn't no pressing a button and selecting a number of copies and pressing it. it that was complicated. But I... We shifted to that and got acquainted with the Xerox Corporation. And it wasn't too many days that went by before somebody from another printing company, I, I believe that their machines were called copy something, and they said, you want to change jobs? I said, how much does it pay? And I settled all that. Yeah, I, I'll take, I'll, I'll go with, with uh, Xerox. But one of my desires, and the desires of a lot of those kids that worked in that typing pool and through other places in the Bureau, was that they'd like to get transferred to an office that was near their home or near their family. I always wanted to get transferred to Charlotte. But no way were they going to transfer me to Charlotte. I had to stay there. But I went to work for Xerox, and they trained me on this equipment. And the next thing I knew, there was an opening for a serviceman in Charlotte in vicinity and asked me uh, uh, did I want to go there and I said can you be ready tomorrow I, yeah, I'll be ready tomorrow we'll go so we went to move to Charlotte through by the Xerox Corporation where I couldn't with the government but then but Betty and I moved to Charlotte and when we came to Charlotte we laid out a church for probably a couple of years and then uh, Something, you know, isn't it, isn't it funny how we try to say it? It's something, but it was God who changed our heart, changed my heart, and called me to preach. It hadn't always been easy. There's problems. You know how the problems are when you deal with people, and there were problems, but nevertheless, I'm here because God, all the way from me being born in Jonesboro, Tennessee, to transfer into Charlotte by the, with the Xerox Corporation, God has directed our lives. We, we've not always followed sometimes, and, and I hope that we're learning. So a, long, a road that we've traveled has probably touched us in some way, this fact about this church, Bible, Baptist Church. Now we're going to talk, well let me ask you this first, what brought you here today? Do we have anybody here for the very first time? Anybody for the very first time? This, I don't play tricks. <laughs> you, you tell me you're a visitor, but pastor knows that. What, what brought you here? Did you come today because you're a member here? Well, that's good. That's where you ought to be today. 
Is there a longing in your heart, even though you go to church, there's a longing in your heart that things are just not right and you know they need to be right? Well, I believe God brought you here today to consider those things. Because He is working, I know that. And we're going to talk about that institution, if we can call the church that. And when I say church... I mean ecclesia, a, an assembly. And there's, there's a lot of discussion about what the church is, but I like local church because local church gets things done. They send out missionaries and they go out visiting and they, they visit the widows and the orphans and so forth. A local church does that. So when I talk about it, I, I, I talk about an assembly, an assembly. Now, I realize that we have many men and women here today that you, ha- you carry degrees and find it's, it's no problem with that. I, sometimes I wish I had a degree, you know, I could wear a fit, but, uh, but I don't have one. I just graduated from Bible college, and, and that's it. Then I've studied. I've almost thrown away everything that I taught, uh, was taught in the Bible school because I found out that these professors, they get their information from somebody else. You understand that? They've got a big library, and from this big library, if they got a question, they go uh, uh, see what, how does Dr. Sight sound in brass? How does, he, how does he understand that? But I want us to understand the Bible they just as it is written. And when we see the term church, I want us to think about a local assembly of people like Bible Baptist Church right here. Think, think that way, okay? And you'll be glad that you did. And... Uh, Somebody told me that I need to get a little, another degree. Uh, maybe you need a degree in Greek. I'm going to tell a joke now. Listen. <laughs> you know what I, I, I answered to them? I know a little Greek. He runs a restaurant down here. <laughs> His name's George. And I, I do not make fun of you who are credited in a lot of other things. That, that's fine. It, it, just, just use what you, what you train for and make sure it's right and, and go on with it. You see, we spend a lot of time trying to justify things that we do and, and trying to justify groups that call themselves church. Do you realize I'll get mobbed before I get out of here. Do you realize that there is no Baptist church You say, Charles, what in the world are you talking about? You're, you're inside the Bible Baptist Church, that church that you helped to get started, and you say that uh, it's not a Baptist church? Not in the way I'm thinking. See, have you ever noticed that Baptists do not have, uh, they have places, you know, meeting places and stuff like that, but we're not referred to, and it's, it's error to refer to us as the Baptist Church. There's no such a thing as the Baptist Church. There may be the Presbyterian Church. There may be the Episcopal Church. There may be the Catholic Church. But there's no Baptist Church because we don't have the hierarchy anywhere to get under their umbrella. So first there's, there's no Baptist Church. Now, when I go to the doctor, or particularly when I go to the hospital about dead, and they said, what's your religious uh, preference? Are you Protestant or Catholic? I say, neither. I'm Baptist. I'm Baptist. I'm not these other things. because they don't, they don't operate as a church. So we let them alone. Now, what is so uh, great and stands out about Bible Baptist Church or any other scriptural church. A church has Jesus as its head. Understand that. They they have Jesus as the head. When you have trouble here, I don't mean trouble, trouble. I just mean difficulties along the way. Where are you going to get your answer from? There's no headquarters that you can go to and get the answer. Not that I I don't know of any. I've got some that's tried to be, but so far they haven't worked out very well. Where do you go to get your help? Well, you go to God. He's given us his book here. 
And we can read, we can read because we've got that degree past our name. We can read. And we can see what would Jesus do. And Bible Baptist Church has as its head the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got a great pastor. Matter of fact, he's so great he ought to take me out to eat every now and then. I'm afraid to ask him to play golf with me because he'd, he'd laugh so much he'd probably, something terrible would happen to him. Because I don't, I don't work golf very well. The nut invented that game. Weird, weird game. Now, I want all you wives to stop up your, your ears just a minute. I want to read a verse of Scripture. And I know right off the bat, I better be ducking. For the husband is the head of the wife. <clears throat> Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. See, God does not leave us with questions about who's operating things, who's running things, who, who is in charge here. The Lord Jesus Christ is who is in charge. Sure, you have a very nice pastor. I, I was afraid when he asked me to come that, well, I'll say something. I have, a, I have mouth problems. I, I open my mouth sometimes. I believe the hinges are put on wrong. But my mouth should close. A lot of places it doesn't close. Now, none of you are like that. I can tell just looking out through there. I, none of you are like that. But I'm like that. I, I just, if something comes to my mind, I may tell you about it. And uh, it's not good. You can get killed doing that. But the husband is the head of the wife. Y'all understand that. Ladies, you understand that? I forget who, who, which one of the men it was told me to bring that out. <laughs> he, was, he was about this tall. Right good, handsome looking guy. And has a, a light brown jacket on. Black hair. Well, he's got left. So I, I don't know who, I, I really don't know who he is, but that's what the Bible. Christ is the head of the church and the savior of the body. Now I realize that um, the Roman Catholic Church says that Peter is the head. Well, if Peter's the head, they, he's done a bad head. It's, it's not very good. Things are happening that should never be happening. The head has the authority over the church. The head, Christ has the authority over Bible Baptist Church. I realize that you are, you, you have uh, people that are, are deacons and other things, and, and they take care of things that can take care of, but Jesus is the one that takes care of the church. Now, what is the mission? And this is down where it's most important. What's the mission of the church? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. A second grader could read that and understand that and tell you exactly what it means. Our job as a local assembly is that we are to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Have you also noticed that when Jesus uh, said that, he was talking to, not to everybody around his area, but those disciples that he had chosen. He talked to them. Now, it's quite obvious that uh, 11 or 12 men would, would have... Uh, some might have some difficulty with that, but that's what the, they are. I understand, by the way, that those churches that the Revel, book of the Revelation talks about, there's, to my knowledge, not a single wood I'm alive today. That's booming. I, that, that's what I've heard. It might, I may be wrong. Bible Baptist Church, church 45 years you followed that command of God. Now, I was here in the early stages, and, uh, and we had missionaries to go where we couldn't go, but we went here. We went all over this place. I know uh, this may have been Brother Bill Elliott that was with me that particular time, 
But we, we were looking at, at, at a, a house on Fairview Road. The only Fairview I had ever heard about was over around South Park. So we went fumbling over there one night, up and down the street, looking for that house. It wasn't there. It's not there now, and it never will be there. Because... It's over on our, our side of town, over there uh, around 218 in that area. Fairview. God has said to go. It's clear. A church commandment not given to some other organization. Now, I'm glad that we have uh, different things to listen to, different things to watch. But when it comes down to the rubber meeting the road, this book that you have, God's Word here, is where we get our instructions to live and how this church is to live. It's by following what the Lord Jesus Christ has said. So keep in mind that when Jesus gave that commandment, He gave it to those 12 or 11 perhaps, Apostles, he gave it to them. That local church, that local assembly with Jesus as its head. I understand that. Now what? Sending missionaries to the field. Do mission work at home. You ask me, how does a church like BBC accomplish that? Let me read you something. It's not very much on here, just words. But listen to these words. Tarleton, Hagler, Hodge, Long, Greer, Gunner, Lane, Mullis, Leatherman, Plylers, Sowers, Owens, Bailey, Jackson, Pig, Thompson, Smith, Nance, Thomas, Chastain, Chambers, Triplett, Tanners, Cothran, Bowen, Holmes, Burnett, Pfeiffer, Helms, Campbell, Evers, Friedel, Jones, Manus, Black, Doolin, Pope, Adams, Beal, Elliott, Perry, Privet, Robinson, Ross, Sanders, Kincaid, Bomar, Sloan, Maudlin. Do you know who these people were? Are? Some of them were, but these are members, former, and even maybe probably former members of Bible Baptist Church. This church got to be what it is today because of people. Now this is, I hope I didn't leave anybody out because I, I tried my best to get them all I could. But this, th these people here are responsible in God's eyes with our early work of this church. They did something. Didn't wait on somebody else to do it. They did it. And they, week after week, month after month, year after year, door, door, door after door, knocking, ringing the bells. These people did that, that work. And that's why Bible Baptist Church today is what it is is because of those people and others like them. There's many more, many more. But this old brain got to work in one day, and, and that's the best way I can tell them of Bible Baptist on Sunday. What can this church do to better itself? You people that are members here, you can take part in the service. You can be one of these people here. And later on somebody say, hey, his name's listed to that role too. Now what's the miss history of missions activity with BBC? I don't have the record. I have some of it. I told you that in 1972 there were 123 people made professions of faith in Christ. That's a lot of people. I wish it's like that in every church. Don't you be, make a difference? 123, and majority of them submitted themselves for baptism and became members of Bible Baptist Church. My, what a great time we had going from the door. I like people. You, you understand that, don't you? you already, 
I'll kid with you. I'll everywhere you are. I, I, the ministry has brought so many people into my life and so many things that it's not explained. I can't explain it. And God was in all of that. He, he was working every bit of this out. I'm here today because pastor asked me to be here. Yeah, but I'm sure God laid me on his heart. And he said, we, he can't cause too much trouble. <laughs> I'll sit, I'll sit three or four rows from the front and watch him. And he, he, can't, he can't do too much wrong. <laughs> but you'd like to see that again, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to see again when you came in here on Tuesday night or Friday, Thursday night? And just, wouldn't it be wonderful just to have dozens, dozens and dozens of people ready to go out? If you just made one call, if you just made one call in a day or in a week, it would make a difference. You'd be doing such a good thing. The record that the missions that you have as, as missions given, it, it's records in heaven. I don't know what it is. Now, the pastor can tell us a whole lot of things. You've got to answer certain things like that. But the main thing is that we're not doing for it for down here. We're doing it for up there. We're doing it for God. Can you think how much God loves you? I, I think of that all the time. I say, Lord, I don't quite understand. As sorry as I am. That sorry, that's an explanation from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Somebody's really bad, sorry. You don't work, you don't do right. He's just sorry. And I feel that way sometimes when there's so much to be done and I do so little. But all of us working together, you as a church working together, I would challenge you and never change from, well, yeah, there's things that you can change, but don't change for what this church was founded upon. Founded upon the authority of the Word of God, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you believe that He's the Son of God and repent of your sin, He's promised salvation to you. So repent of your sins, believe that Jesus is the Son of God. That's it. Understand that God honors faithfulness, honors obedience to His Word, you can go to a lot of churches today and the music was, I like, I like music. I like your music. I even like a little bit of bluegrass. Some of it, I'm a, I'm a banjo fan. I, I, I'm fascinated more than I am interested in, in that. I'm fascinated how somebody could pick the, get the uh, uh, banjo with every finger on it. That fascinates me. And I can have that, and you can have your special little music, but what's important is that we're doing our job for Christ here in this place, telling others about the Savior. I'm going to make a statement. It's a statement I believe, and a statement that I hope never disappears from this place. Bible Baptist Church is a good church. I want you to remember that. It's got a good background. It's got a lot of good people. It's always had a lot of good people. And there is 45 years of recorded history present to prove that fact. 45 years between the two pastors here and probably Brother Phillips, he has notes too. But between these three pastors, we know the history of this place. And we know that the history is good. It's been a lot of good. I mean, some stuff's not been so good. I understand that. All you have to say, Baptist, you know somebody's already had a fight there. So go on. Go somewhere else. <laughs> but wait, this is a good church, but it can be a better church. It's not important. I mean, we preachers like to have, instead of, well, I don't know how many people are here today, but it's a pretty good crowd. It's a pretty good group. Three, four, three hundred, four hundred. I don't know. But it'd be good to have all the seats filled. That would be good. And uh, you can do that with God's help. Guarantee it. Because the word is true. Our pastor, well, we attend church, he makes us memorize verses. A new verse every week. In Jeremiah 1.5, mark this down in your Bible. Let me 
let me get it so I make sure I don't mess up. I, uh, Jeremiah 1 5. This is the verse that we memorized. He said, You sure didn't memorize it, did you, Charles? Yes, I did. Now, that, in context of Scripture, and, and I, I like to. I like to always put this as context of Scripture is important. The context here is important. God says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained, ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. See, that's telling us that God has had everything to do with us. Everything to bring us to this place right here. Even to Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. God has ordered all of that. And it's not something that came into his mind before he ever formed us. He knew us. It's almost like we should say, you know, well, he should have just let me die. No, he didn't let you die because he loves you. And he has the only uh, cleansing from sin. The only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. There's no, no other way. You, you could be baptized till you're just wet all over and inside and out, and, and you'll still die and spend eternity away from God. Because salvation is of the Lord. Don't ever forget that. You remember that. And you remember also as a church, a local assembly, you are to take that message to the world. And that bulletin board outside, that beautiful work, and if you're doing a good job there, but you could probably do more. Think about that. Brother Rob.